It's taken Sarah two days and three flights to reach this remote part of Canada. I finally arrived here in Canada. It's very, very cold. I wouldn't hesitate before I said it was absolutely bloody freezing. Sarah is heading to Moose Factory Island, which lies at the mouth of the Moose River. The Hudson's Bay Company had their main outpost here, and it's where John Malcolm arrived 200 years ago. With the outside temperature at minus 25, Sarah can drive across the frozen river to get there. Dr. Scott Stephen is an expert in the history of the Hudson's Bay Company. Hello, Sarah. Welcome to Moose Factory. Thank you very much. It is worth pointing out, Scott, how different we look, uh, considering we're both dressed for the exact same temperature, <laughs> isn't it? It is slightly ridiculous. I've got three pairs of socks on and the wrap around duvet. You've got like trainers on. They just stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll get used to it. Good, I hope so. Now, what can you tell me about John Malcolm's arrival? Well, that's why we're standing here. Oh, OK. Because this is basically the spot where John would have disembarked from the boat. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. It's worth pointing out that is a body of water. That is the river out there. We drove over it to get here, which just blows my mind. Winter is obviously a major fact of life here in, in Hudson Bay. So different from Orkney. An entirely different world from what John had been used to. Scary, isn't it? Why don't we go inside? Okay, let's go. So, Scott, what would John have found when he arrived here? Well, we actually have an image ah. of Moose Factory. So that's the first thing he would have seen? Mm-hmm. Now, I read on the passenger list in Orkney that John was a labourer. Do you know what sort of thing he would he be doing? We talk a lot about fur traders. Now, John Malcolm himself isn't trading any fur. He's going to be doing support roles. A lot of manual labor, cutting firewood, shoveling snow. A cog in a big machine. Exactly. Yeah. It's necessary work to support the Hudson's Bay Company traders. Mm. So the Cree, the indigenous people in this area, Wow. they'll make the journey down rivers like the Moose and trade their surplus furs in exchange for manufactured goods like copper kettles and guns. OK. What skins and furs would the Indian hunters been after? The Hudson's Bay Company will take anything that has fur on it. <laughs> but some furs are particularly valuable in Europe at this time, and uh, first and foremost among these is the beaver, which you can use to make Lovely hats. A range of lovely hats. Wow. I've actually got some furs here. Oh, really? To, uh, what is this? This is a beaver fur. Really? Now, a lot of what you see on top here is not valuable. It's, it's the, the soft under fur. It's the pricey stuff. That's and that's the what the felt stuff. would have been made from. Exactly. Understood. Here we've got a, a, a wolf skin. And then here's, uh, oh, here's a, a fox. Oh, has a head. OK. It was over the end of the table, I hadn't seen. There would be literally tens of thousands of animal skins passing through Moose Factory. I am quite pleased that John was very much a behind-the-scenes kind of guy in this. I wouldn't wear fur myself, but I don't think I realised how against it I actually am until, until I say it all. But I know the time that we're talking was a totally different situation. So I will forgive John Malcolm just this once. Good, I'm glad they're leaving. <laughs> so the standard contract would have been five years. Do you know if that's how long John stayed? Well, 1817, it's a difficult year for the Hudson's Bay Company. They are in a very intense period of competition with uh, a rival company known as the Northwest Company. The Northwest Company was an alliance of independent Scottish fur traders and French settlers. They knew the Hudson's Bay Company trading posts were mostly along the coast, so ignoring the HBC monopoly, they set up rival posts inland. 
Here, they could intercept the Cree en route to the bay and secure the best furs. With vital business being lost, the Hudson's Bay Company was forced to take action and also pushed further into the harsh interior. John arrived in 1817, as the battle for control of the fur trade was raging. We've got the Moose Factory Journal from the year that John Malcolm arrived. And if we flip through, there we are. So this is September 10th, 1817. Mr. J. Davis, Mr. Dear MacDonald, James Spence, John Malcolm went on board the Gypsy to proceed to Albany. So he wasn't there very long then? No, not even two weeks. There's a real sense of desperation from the Hudson's Bay Company to send men inland where that competition with the Northwest Company was really taking place. Now there's yep. us at Moose Factory. There's Albany. He and seven other men were sent inland up the Albany River to here. It's an inland post named Gloucester House. That's about 350 miles from Albany. Oh my God. Considerably more remote and farther away from assistance or supplies. Sounds horrible. Poor bugger. I feel sorry for him because he's got here after three months and gone, so this is home for the next, you know, for the foreseeable future. He's moved on again, before he was ready, possibly. 